Are you sick and tired of being asked about the TLC? When you look at this corner, do you not even think that it's a thing? Well, if you're like me, raise your hand. Because I got what you need. You need Telos Tea. That's right. Grab yourself a nice hot cup of Telos Tea. Not Telos Tea. It's not a thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we don't do that. I don't know about the meaning crisis Left, right, black, white, or other vices But Jesus Christ is right Or if we're all saved From my perspective Our propositions Participate procedurally Running in circles Remember in body We're in the age of decay Symbolically speaking, the reapers are reaping. Them damn egregores are whispering sweetly. We're all NPCs in the belly of the beast. Red pill, blue pill, bread pill, Mars Hill, or DMT, or whatever you feel. Got one and number two, it's all the same damn thing. So clean your room, repent on Zoom, ontology for dummies, a bird's eye view. Cause if you really knew, could you really even say? Totally depraved, all totally saved A total disposition from the bed we all made Or is it the elect? Or are we just insane? From John Verveke to Jonathan Pajot And Jordan Peterson to the Chris Pacu Show Paul Vander Clays and Griswold Grimm and all the dice he shakes. The sestuary ditty is a little bit cringy and quite the U-shaped or the hero's journey. All the NPCs in the flood dread and water to watch you save the day with a bunch of chitter chatter. From the ortho bros to the Catholic Joes, or atheistic Joes, to Protestant folks, the Joe Schmoes, and Jewish Jacobs, and everything in between. So love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul, with all your mind and your fingers and toes, all your neighbors too. As if they were your own So love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul And with all your mind and your fingers and toes All your neighbors too As if they were your own The Friday Morning Random Welcome to the Friday Morning Nameless. I'm Chad the Alcoholic, and that is Chris McDonald. Hello, hello. Waves of obsession. Waves. Watch them. <laughs> Be obsessed. <laughs> Be obsessed. Um, <clears throat> this uh, I'm very uh, grateful that you showed up. We planned this for months and months now, um, mm -hmm. and I'm very grateful that you are able to show up today and i um, really excited to hear your story. Um, I think, uh, well, I just think the whole thing is great. All this, this great fun and fellowship that we get to have on this thing called the internet. I don't know if people out there have heard of the internet, but mm, I doubt it's, it. 
Probably not. But um, oh, speaking of, uh, this will probably be, it's probable that this would be the greatest show that ever happened on the internet. Um, I, I don't know if it will actually happen, but it is probable um, or possible, one of the two, however way you want to look at that. I just noticed that right <clears throat> here, I have like a shiny spot. Oh. It looks like a, that's weird. <laughs> weird. Okay. All right. I was trying to fight the glare off my glasses, so I guess it uh, passed it on to you. Well, <laughs> okay. Well, everybody, say hello. Sorry, Chris. I know that many of the folks that are watching um, uh, are well aware of you and are very are going to be very happy to hear your story. And um, what I was hoping that we could do was hear your story and just have you tell us uh, about the home you grew up in and and what your life was like and uh you know go as um just tell the story that you want to tell and i'm going to do my best to not cut you off and just i want to listen i want to listen because you're uh you got a great story i know you do i don't know what it is but i know you got one and because we all do we all have stories. yeah 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 and um so thank you again very much for joining me is there anything you'd like to say before we begin no, you've given me a lot of time to think about this, so I, I should know what I'm supposed to say. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> what is this, like uh, Rando, I don't know, 20 or so? Uh, this will be Rando 31. 31. Yeah, I'm on I'm late uh, to the party. <laughs> technically, it's 31, but like... There's a, there's a there's a hidden rando that was never shared. Mm -hmm. So technically it's 31, but actually it's 32. I'll take it. I'll take it. Perfect. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm very excited about this, dude. This is great. <laughs> I'm glad you're excited. <laughs> I'm I'm sure uh, you know everyone who sits on the other side of this is like, hmm, I'm not sure how exciting this is, but anyways. Um, the home I grew up in. So, uh, let's see here. So I actually, I grew up in the home that's not very far from where I'm sitting at right now. So, uh, still live in the suburbs of St. Louis. Uh, it's called St. Charles County. So it's a, you know, metropolitan area right outside of St. Louis. Um, <clears throat> been here since I was four. So pretty much as long as I can re recall, you know, um, you know, simple, simple little ranch house, in the suburbs. Um, I, I got a younger sister. She's four, or it was four years younger than me. <clears throat> and um, I don't know. I mean, I think I think my childhood for the most part was pretty, pretty basic. I was a nerdy little kid. You know, um, played soccer a bunch. Um, nothing too earth shattering. You know, typical eighties kids type of stuff. Legos and. Nintendo and riding bikes and, you know, baseball and all that fun stuff. Um, now, you know, I was kind of thinking back on, on a lot of this stuff and I guess it wasn't, you know, I, I kind of struggled to remember exactly when it was, but I guess around 10 or 11 or so, that's when my parents got divorced. They split up. Now they weren't like, I don't know they weren't like really argumentative or anything, or at least if they were, they did a really good job of hiding it from me. Um, but in relation to this space, you know, we never went to church. We never talked about church or politics or really much of anything of controversy. Um, and I guess I took the whole thing fairly well. I don't know. It was a pretty easy divorce. Um, you know, my parents split up and, uh, my dad did right. He uh, he paid for my mom to go to college, and so she went to school to become a nurse. And so you know she did that for a while. Uh, lived, me, me and my sister lived with with my mom, <clears throat> and you know we got to go to my dad's every weekend. You know, and that was fun. You know, it was a fun fun thing. Um, but. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, as far as childhood goes, you know, I don't remember it being all that crazy or controversial or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> probably wasn't until high school, honestly, did 
things start drifting around, you know. So, um, yeah, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, I was thinking about this earlier. Um, you know, you, you shift friend groups and all this stuff, you know, did that a bunch. Um, but going into high school, <clears throat> and your mask always reminds me of this, is the, the backyard wrestling scene was quite quite hopping back in the day. And uh, me and a whole bunch of guys that I knew, we had uh, we did the backyard wrestling thing quite seriously. Cool. And, um, yeah, it was cool. <laughs> kind of painful, but it was cool. Had a mask, so that was that was a bonus, you know. Um, but uh, so one of the, I don't know if it's interesting, but I guess it kind of adds to my story is, so like when I step outside of my house, my childhood house, and I looked up at the top of the hill, there's a church. Now I always called this cult on the rock, um, because we, I, I, me and all the neighborhood kids, we hated this church. It was just a horrible thing. Um, because they had all these playgrounds and all this fun stuff, but they would never let you play on it, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. So real, real stingy with the uh, the playground equipment and wouldn't let us, you know, cut through the parking lot to get to the other, um, you know, the fields and stuff. Because <clears throat> where I lived, there was actually still some cornfields and things like this. It wasn't as built up as, as it is now. Um, but we did get some really cool steel chairs from them, which we used in the backyard wrestling thing. So, um but, you know, going, whatever, you know, getting in the middle of high school or whatnot, I, oh, you know, whatever. Started hanging out with the bad, bad crew, bad, bad crew of kids. And um, they're just more fun. They, they just are. They're just a lot more fun. Um, but this was also when I stopped going to see my dad and was giving my mom just, a, you know, a really, really hard time. And she couldn't control me, obviously. She just, she couldn't. Um, you think that was like just a, <clears throat> an age thing? Or <clears throat> was there different changes that each of them were going through that were kind of prompting this kind of uh, rebellion? You know, you know, it's kind of hard to say, right? Because I, I was honestly a pretty, pretty good kid. Like I had straight A's and I didn't really ever get in detention or in trouble or anything. Um so yeah, I don't I'm not exactly sure what the trigger point was for me. You know, it just maybe the whole just it all all uh started processing, you know, like hey, you know, dad's not around to teach you how to do all the crap you're supposed to know how to do. And so you think you're you think you're uh whatever, you do it yourself, right? And you start doing it yourself and yeah, I didn't want to listen to my mom and so yeah, I just rebelled. I rebelled pretty hard um, junior year, pretty much. Um, damn near flunked out of high school, really. Like, it just was bad friends, bad choices, um, taking bad things, you know, um, and just didn't really, didn't really uh, work out that well. Um, <clears throat> this is also probably when I started uh, whatever this friend groups, you know, they were kind of like the mall rats, the, the metal heads, the punks, these kind of, you know, that crew. And so I was really starting to get really big into the metal scene, enjoying metal a lot. Um, which is one of the reasons why I've always kind of liked you a lot. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It just, uh, I guess not having that religious background and not having your dad in your house and, wanting to rebel you just kind of do it and yeah i don't know it just um mm. anyways um do you remember liking music up to that point before uh discovering metal um well you know the ironic thing is is that you know my dad always always would try to get me and my sister to listen to country music a lot mm. like it was a damn game you know, in the truck, I'm like, hey, who's this? Who's this? Who's this? You know, um, I hate country music to this day. But <laughs> <laughs> um, ironically, my dad's actually the first one to really um, kind of show me any any metal uh, that I actually enjoyed. It was 
he was watching the Howard Stern show mm-hmm. and Rob Zombie had come on. He was like, here, come here, watch this, you know? And so that was like one of the first starts for me, I think, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's just, you know, my dad was sort of loose, loosey goosey, just whatever, watch whatever movies you want, don't, you know, you know, have fun on the weekends, but. Yeah, just kind of the, just kind of all shifted pretty pretty bad, right right there towards uh, the end of high school. Um, well, let's see here. Um, yeah, the, the, so so I guess uh, senior year or whatnot. That's actually where I met my wife. Hmm. So, you know, we're all partying together and whatnot and having fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, the funny thing is, um, so <laughs> we always joke about this, but. Whenever we, whenever she, she fell in love with, with me first. Like I, I thought she was crazy. So, um, but we always kind of joke about it cause we, we were at a party and I was just chilling in the boat because that's, you know, what, what you do hiding away from everybody, just hanging out in the boat in the garage. So, uh, she come and talked to me and I was the first guy who actually just talked to her and didn't, um, whatever, you know, try to try to have some some agenda or whatnot. Um, And so she fell in love with me. And um, that was like 2001 or so, you know, we've been together ever since. Um, But we pretty much were like, we've pretty much lived together since that time. She kind of had a hard life too. And so we kind of really, I don't know, like, I, I, I feel like looking back at all this, I'm like, I felt like I was always trying to like be around people who I thought it had way worse than I did. And so, you know, I'm like, Oh gosh, you know, I think I was some of these guys. And, um, but, but thank God I, I met her. Cause, um, I, I remember this quite distinctly, like the crew I was hanging out with, they were, it's like this decision moment of they were going to go run off to Texas and, I was like this damn close to going with them, you know, like really, really close. And honestly, if I had done that, I probably would have been some kind of like criminal mastermind or something Mm. to be honest. I think that's what would have happened. Mm. Um, So thank God it it didn't. And I stayed with, stayed with my wife and they went away and went on the next chapter in life, you know? Um, Yeah. Thank God for that. Cause like crystal, (laughs) Uh, like criminal masterminds don't exist they're just uh, yeah exactly exactly right you know you think you know <laughs> there's only people who who think that that might happen um but it doesn't actually happen so no. um geez um let's see here yeah so whatever shift shifting groups around and um, me and my wife are kind of inseparable at this point and we're kind of bouncing around house to house, just kind of going wherever we could, um, because we just wanted to, whatever, we just wanted to be together. And so we did, um, I guess I'll, whatever, a few, few years later or whatnot, um, uh, my wife's stepdad had gotten really ill. Mm. And so he finally let me move into the house. I got to stay in the uh, downstairs in the basement on the couch. Um, but he, he had started to get ill and whatnot. And so whatever he, you know, he was, he was taking all the help he could get and it was a win-win, you know I mean? Like we got to still be together all the time and, and all this stuff. Um, How were your parents um, about uh, thinking about the the relationship at that time? I mean, I don't know, because I didn't really let them talk to me about it, mm. to, to be honest. You know, I, I, I didn't really, I just was like, meh. <laughs> what, did, so was your relationship uh, with your parents in general at that time kind of at arm's length or what? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I just kind of like disconnected, really. Mm-hmm. You know, I just kind of disconnected almost entirely from them. Um, it wasn't until, I mean, you know, whatever I, I, you know, my mom, I had much closer, uh, relation with, but yeah, my dad definitely kind of, uh, 
drifted out pretty hard, really. Even still to this day, it's it's not good. So, um, yeah. What was I talking about? <laughs> you were in the basement at your um. Your... Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So so we're at the big house, a beautiful house. It was it was great. Um, in the woods over by the uh, over by the river over the Missouri River. Um, really cool house and everything. But the problem was is that uh, whatever stepdad was, you know, um, without saying too much, he just um. How he was paying for this house was not very clear. <laughs> Let's just well I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so uh um you know, he had a he had a business, and so my wife's brother, he he was kind of running the business and um yeah, he just got he got he got really sick, you know, and and he just um we spent a lot of time in the hospital. I mean like six months just like in hospice and all kinds of stuff. It was horrible, you know? Um, and that was, in, I don't know, whatever. It was like 04 or something like that. And um, he ended up, uh, he ended up passing away. And uh, after he died though, like they got this giant house with nobody to pay for it. And my mother-in-law, um, <sighs> whatever my 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 wife's uh, mom passed away um she wh whatever you know she she had to sell the house you know um we all had to pretty much leave you know um somehow she sold the house and um uh, her brother he was able to finally get a house but me and my wife we actually ended up um moving to my mom's house for a little bit for like a month, two months or something like that, a few months. Um, but her mom ended up getting a trailer in a trailer park. Um, not too, not too far from, from where we were. And she called us up one day and was like, Hey, there's a trailer across the street for sale. Thousand dollars, thousand dollars. Nice. Sold. Right. Yeah. Um, we did it. It was, it was great. You know, cause I'd never, you know, I'm like a lot of people like we never lived in an apartment or anything. We just went, bought this trailer. Great. It was a really nice place, actually. Just had to pay pad rent and electricity and all that fun stuff. Um, at this time, we were, uh, me and my wife had both, uh, <clears throat> we had started working at the casino. They had opened up a big casino by us. And so they did this, like, big grand opening type thing. We were part of all of it. And so we all, we had, we had jobs there and, and everything. I really, really enjoyed it, actually. I was a cook and she was a server and um, you know, we had done that for a number of years and up until kind of like whenever her stepdad passed away is shortly after that, I um, went to tech school for um, <laughs> um, computer aided drafting and design. Right? That's, mm. that's sort of like what I, ended up choosing as my my little profession or whatever um but yeah after after her her after her stepdad had passed away and you know geez well this is kind of funny too geez I, I kind of you pass up all kinds of stuff and you're thinking about this um so I guess I guess let me go back for a second mm -hmm. you know um, while I was in metal, in my metal phases and stuff, this, this is sort of where I developed a lot of my, um, I don't know, a darker interest in the occult really is where, where a lot of that spawned and a lot of the people that were connected to that group, those groups, you know, um, like the first concert ever I went to, like the first real concert, it was morbid angel with sepultura and pantera wow which was a brutal concert it was yep. just absolutely brutal um but morbid angel was like one of my favorite bands mm. and if you ever stop and listen or read any of the lyrics to some of their songs um there, there's nothing pleasant about any of it really yeah i could never get into it honestly. yeah yeah um 
I love Pantera, but that's because Dime and Vinny were just so key, great right. players. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I loved, I loved the partying aspect of it too, the home videos and stuff. Uh huh. Yeah. I was drawn to that sort of thing. But other than that, I, like I liked a lot of metal, but <clears throat> some of this stuff, like I even I met Danny Filth from Cradle of Filth once, mm -hmm. and he was like super shit faced, <laughs> and like. It was kind of pathetic and <clears throat> really nice English bloke, but it's just kind of like, yeah, no, I just, I couldn't rap. I couldn't get into it. I tried to like stuff like that, but I can only get so far into metal mm -hmm. and, and we could talk more about that. I'm sorry. I'll stop. You. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, but it did. I mean, it had an influence on me, I guess, to some degree, you know, um, <laughs> To, to those who aren't brought up in the church and aren't told what to believe you, you kind of, whatever you, you know, your environment, yeah. you, you get your own, you can think for yourself, you know? Yes. And so I chose that. I don't know. I just, you know, I, I, I was interested in it, you know, Ooh, what's this occult stuff? What's all this, you know? And, and at that time you really couldn't, it's not like today, you know, you, you couldn't just go onto YouTube and find a hundred channels all talking about every esoteric occult thing under the sun. Right. I'm actually like really grateful that I didn't have all that. Cause I, I don't know that it would have been, I'm not sure how that would have impacted me. It probably wouldn't have been a good thing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I, I was really interested in that kind of stuff, you know, just the occult, everybody's lying, you know, uh, I, I can sympathize with Grimm, honestly, like, because in that whatever, 0203, like that whole time frame, like, I also was very much into this truther kind of scene, right, you know, it's just um, everything that was going on, and, and then you got all these different people talking about, you know, how, what religion is, and yeah, I just that's where I sort of developed a lot of my ideas from. It's just like religions is this tool to to manipulate stupid people to to control other people, right? I mean, that's that was my core belief. And and government is the muscle of all of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, there's a shadow government, all this stuff, you know. And it, I don't, I still don't know what to think about half of these things, really, because um, I don't know much of anything. That's what I'm truly coming to realize That's my thinking <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know i don't know crap to be honest with you um i'm and a crap artist that's what i am be before i was pretty invested in like and fearful about a lot of that stuff and thinking about a lot of that stuff and kind of captured by it and today i'm just like whatever yeah 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 <laughs> um but yeah uh you know so that was kind of my mental space was, was, was a lot of that um, kind of thinking. And I'd also started to kind of get really big into Terrence McKenna. I really liked uh, a lot of what he had said, just, just the way he said it, the way he thought and, and thought about things was really interesting to me. Um, but yeah. So um, we both ended up, uh, leaving the casino uh it would because well and whatever we were we were partying in a whole new way at, at that point you know when you start working in the industry the restaurant industry uh those people become your family right i mean they just do you work all night you work every weekend you work every holiday with these people they that's what you do you just go out you go party and every night every weekend and go to the clubs go to the bars and that's just what we did for for years um it wasn't until after her, her stepdad died that that's when we, you know, I had, was going to school and was, was finally almost getting ready to whatever, go, go try to find a job and my wife. And um, we just, we left because we're just like, it took so much, right? It took so many holidays, so much time, so many family gatherings. It just kind of, it just took it all away. And so we had to had to just get away from it, right? And that's just sort of what the restaurant industry can do to you. It just <laughs> it, can it takes a lot, but I did enjoy it. Unfortunately, I did a really I liked it a lot. Um, so yeah, let's see here. Now living in a trailer, 
that was fun. Um, finally got me a job and, um, trying to think, um, Did you sense, uh, like, um, some changing into a different kind of manhood at that point. Um, not, not, not drastically. No, no. I mean, I was still super partying, um, uh, still very interested in the cult and just anti-religious in general. Um, yeah, that didn't fade for, for quite some time, really. Um, quite some time. <laughs> but like the, the responsibility of switching it out of the restaurant industry into having more of a, into school and then into a different kind of career. Well, you know what it did? I started drinking. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because I had to stop doing other things. Mm -hmm. And so I decided I'll be like my dad and I'll just drink all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I did. <laughs> you know, that's what I did. Um, yeah. A, you know, functionally, fun functioning drinking person. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I kind of lost my train of thought here. Um, sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, so, oh, four, pass away. Yeah, so, and then it, it was just kind of like, I don't know, we had like, it was like, oh, five, oh, six, oh, seven, oh, eight. We had like multiple deaths in the family. It was like one after another after another. Um, really kind of, I don't know, I think... I think that was really the catalyst for me. I mean, we had, you know, her stepfather dies. That really just shattered everything in our world. Um, because, like, not only did he die, but, like, my wife had taken out a credit card in his name. Like, or taken out a credit card for him to use. And so didn't realize what had actually happened. And so it's like, when he passed away, she's left with a $10,000 bill. Mm. You know, and I mean, she's like, whatever, 20, you know what I mean? Like, like it just was, it was rough, you know? And so um, that's kind of how we started off living in this trailer, 10 grand in debt right out of the hole. Um, and just really kind of just finding out a lot of things about what was going on. Just, uh, you know, um, and also having to deal with, with her mother, um, who, who was also a severe alcoholic. Um, she she really really was um, love her to, love her to pieces you know and and I, she was one of the few people I actually could have some like um, challenging conversations with like she was more open about uh, the spiritual uh, realm of things you know mm -hmm. um, but most of our other friends like they're all nah, non believers really you know and so that that conversation just really wasn't that interesting to to a lot of people in the the circles that I, I, I hung around with, you know, it was more just partying and having a good time, listening to music, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but then, yeah, a few years later, we just had, you know, a handful of other deaths, you know, grandparents die. Um, but then we had one of our, um, like one of our friends die of heroin overdose. Mm -hmm. She left uh, two young kids. And that, that really, you know, that was one of the ones that really kind of, it just, it just was really crappy. You know what I mean? Like just really, really crappy. And um, so we, we were pretty, well, I, whatever, always have been just like that, that you know, heroin or whatever, that's sort of like, you know, you don't go to that realm, you know, just nothing good happens there. And mm -hmm. um, whatever kind of excommunicated some other people in, in that same vein, you know, mm -hmm. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, just, uh, so, you know, really got kind of numb to all the, all the death and, and everything that just kind of sucked really bad. Um, and in all this time, I really had been much more estranged with my, my parents, you know, I almost kind of just 
really didn't hardly talk to him at all. Um, but um, I'm trying to think of, I should know this, but I guess it's 2009. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nine. Um, but we have our, our, uh, our oldest daughter. Mm. Um, so we were kind of told like, you know, there's no way you, you can't have, you can't have children. You know, that's, that's sort of what my wife was told. And we kind of had, had accepted that for, for quite some time. Um, but, uh, you know, God proved otherwise. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Pat had, had our, had our first baby. Yeah. In Oh nine. And then, um, two years later, um, well, shoot, I'm doing it again. Um, I think it was like six months, six, six or seven months before our our uh, first daughter was born. My mom, uh, my wife's real mm. father passes away mm. at like forty two, like mm. really young. Um, so once again, just another sort of like gut blow of just you know, um, and. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, you know, we, yeah, I don't know. We, we, me and my wife got married (laughs) uh, in 09. Go figure. Um, My wife was like eight months pregnant. And so finally we got married, had a baby, living in a trailer. Um, And yeah, I finally, you know, I started my career or whatnot, you know, at this point. And so, um, things were good. You know what I mean? Like th- things were good. Um, I was able to, um, have, have my wife stay at home. So she raised the kids at the house. Um, and you know, yeah, it was, it was, it was a little hard or whatever, but I wouldn't, um, take it back for a moment, you know? Um, she actually got to raise them and teach them and, and, and not have, we never had nannies or anything like that. You know, um, but the trailer was fun. You know, <laughs> you see like the trailer park boys, you know, it's like, uh, I can't say it's too far off from that. Um, you know, it's definitely a, a good time. Um, but yeah, my, um, my wife's, my wife's, uh, younger sister, was also, um, and you gotta understand, like uh, my my mother in law and 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 her sister lived like I'm telling you, like across the street. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she had a trailer, like right there. I could look out the front window and see her. So, um, uh, but it, but it was fine, right? I mean, she never, she wasn't like overbearing or anything. You know, it was it was a good, other than occasionally having to like get stupid crap, but for the most part, it was good. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess at at this point we were, I had maybe sort of stopped being as much of, uh, sort of like the metal metal phase. It sort of drifted a little bit. Uh, we were much more into, we gotten into like the jam band scene, you know? Um, jam band thing was really big. We had a couple of uh, good local bands here in St. Louis that played all the time. And so we do, you know, Monday night Cicero concert in the basement or whatever. And God did that for multiple years on end. And um, I also started going to some of the uh, hippie festivals and whatnot. There was a, a Grateful Dead tribute band that had – um, a big a camp, like a campsite. They had owned a campsite. It was oh, about wow. like an hour and a half away from here. And I mean, it was it was ridiculous. You know, it was just it was ridiculous. Is what it was. Um, did that for a number of years. A lot of fun. You know, a lot of fun. Different world, really different world. Um, but then, then the feds came and shut them down. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And old Jimmy boy, he got, he got put in jail. I mean, I think he went to jail for a number of years. Um, but I think, I think he's back at it again. You know, I think he's trying to get him, get him going, you know, um, the mask. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, and it was fun. It was fun. You know, it was good times. I, you know, I wouldn't take any of it back. Right. Take none of this stuff back. Um, but, but spiritually though, it was just, wasn't there. Like now I, I should, you know, I'll tell you this, like my wife, you know, she's always been a Christian the whole time. She was a Christian. I'd maybe call her a closet Christian a little bit, but you know, um, but she wasn't, she was never like, I don't know. She knew to just, whatever. It just wasn't, it wasn't any fun talking to me about it. You know, um, she wasn't pushy or anything, but she had always kind of said like, she had prayed for me. Like, you know what I mean? Like before she ever met me, she prayed. And I was, I was, I was her answered prayer. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, looking back at it now and what I see, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's exactly what happened. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, and I, I think. Um, was she a practicing Christian? No, no. She just always has been just extremely faithful. Mm. Right. I mean, just unshakable, you know, um, just why do you believe? Because, you know, just they don't need a reason. Don't need to explain it. Don't need to contemplate it or anything. You know, it's not complicated. <laughs> it's not complicated. Um, so, um, oh, geez. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess some interesting things now that I'm kind of backpedaling a little bit, you know. Um, so like when grow when I was growing up, some of the strange things was, is that it's like we never went on a vacation <laughs> ever. <laughs> like going on a vacation was to go see my family down in Arkansas. And that's, that's sort of what me and my sister did. We went down there. We had to spend two weeks with my, my grandparents. And that was sort of like the vacation that we did every year. Now, I didn't mind it when I was younger. It was great, you know. Um, love my grandparents. They're amazing. Uh, aunt and uncle, uh, cousins, just, you know, really, uh, really good. Um, and that, that was probably like the only exposure I ever had to church was my grandma. Well, my grandma and my uncle, I guess they, they were both pretty, um, they were active in, in the church that they had down there, like a Calvary Baptist church. But they were also never like, oh, you got to come to church. You know, it was sort of like, hey, we're going to church. You want to come? Yeah, whatever. Went a few times, you know. Um, but outside of that, I didn't really have, just didn't have a ton of exposure to any of it. Um. Even on my wife's side of the family, none of them, they, they didn't go to church either, you know, even though they generally would all say they're either Catholic or Christian or, or what have you. Um, but as far as like practicing going to church and didn't, didn't happen. Um, yeah. So let's see here. Two years later, I got a, uh, another, another kid. So I've got I've got two little girls, not little anymore. Um, just turned fifteen and thirteen, so scary. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Like so, the doctor <laughs> said, "Nope, no way, you guys are gonna have any kids." And bang, you got two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, you never know. <laughs> you just you, you don't know. Um, I mean, even my sister, you know. My sister was told basically the same thing, and um, she had almost pretty much given up. But uh, just uh, six months ago, found out she's she's having a kid. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, God uh, God does amazing things in people's lives. That's what I'm finding out, really. Um, 
How do I say? Um, What's it like to be a dad? It's, uh, it's, um, it is like, hmm. I think I'm, I'm constantly trying to be a better father than my own father was. I think that's sort of like my, that was my first goal was to really um, try to do something different. Um, uh, it's, I don't know. I'm very honest with my children, like extremely honest with them. Um, especially when it's, when it, when it's now come to, um, you know, introducing religious beliefs and things like this, uh, I've just been extremely, um, cautious. I'll say cautious, right? I've been, I've been very, very cautious not to, um, introduce my own. I just, I don't know. I just don't want, I'm so afraid of influencing them to make a decision that's not authentic to them. Right. Um, I was very, very concerned about that. So, um, I don't know my, my oldest daughter, she's, she's a lot like me. She's got a lot of my mannerisms and sort of humor and just interests and things like this. My, my youngest daughter's a little bit more like my wife, a little more outgoing and, and what have you, but they're just an awesome little blend of both of us. And, uh, they're both like way better kids than I ever was. I know that. Um, but it, it's really sort of the most, uh, apart from becoming Christian, it's, it, it was just the most earth shattering transformative thing that's ever happened. Really. I mean, I still remember this day of like taking home my 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 oldest daughter from the hospital. It, it was like the scariest damn thing I ever did in my life. And you put this you put this baby in this this car seat, and then you got to put it in a back seat to the the car. And you're like, did I did I put the thing together correctly? And I mean, I, I don't know that I drove any more. I I I, <laughs> I, don't know, I thought I was gonna break her. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's amazing. So it just, um, it, it just sort of, uh, kind of changes your priorities, I guess. Really. Did you, um, did you look like teach, how, what's it like to teach a child things like, reading and stuff like this i, I mean I, yeah well um you know it's different it's different for every kid right you know you 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 go through and um you know we, we, whatever i mean i'm i try to think of like what it, what it what it was um i don't know you know, my, my wife is really good about singing to the kids. Like she sung to the kids all the time, had all these little songs and stuff, all the same songs that her mom sung to her. Uh, so she, that was really her really big thing. Um, I was maybe a little more uh, structured, I guess, you know, it's like, oh, we're gonna do the ABCs. We're going to do this and do the words. And, um, but you know, we thought we could do the same exact thing with the other kid, but it didn't really work. And so we had to kind of, I don't know, just really keep changing it up until you understand how they react to things because they don't react the same way. Like you think they do, but they don't. So, <laughs> which is good, though. It's a good yeah. thing. You know, they're the same, but not. Yeah. Did you, were you a storyteller to them? Did you tell them stories and things like this? You know, to be honest, I don't, I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember. You know, memory for me is sort of one of these things that's that's a little ineffable. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I don't even know why I'm saying this. Um, it's like <sighs> one of the things I've been struggling with for a while is is. Have you ever heard of this 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 term aphantasia? You ever heard of that before? I think so. 
it, it's it's this um someone who can't see images in their in their mind's eye oh yes i heard this today yes yes yeah that's me to a, a thousand fold like i i do not see mental images at all and so memory for me is is the same way like i don't i i can't picture anything like there's no i don't i can't see whatever i can't see anything you know um and then when I talk to my wife, I talk to my kids and I talk to other people. And I'm like, you, you know, you actually see it. And oh yeah, yeah, they do. Um, this was, this was sort of like a really weird thing that sort of uh, struck me a few years ago. Uh, Cause I thought everybody was just BSing me really. That's what I thought. Mm. Um, but over the last few weeks, I've been thinking about this conversation I've been really challenging myself to kind of think about this stuff. Cause I, I've always been a very forward thinking person. And I think it got a lot to do with it. You know, I just don't, I don't know. I, I, I you know, I can still remember the past. I remember things. Um, this is in a way different way. Um, and I was listening to Christian talk to, I think it's Steven. Mm -hmm. um, and he was talking about synesthesia. He's yeah. got synesthesia. I'm like, oh. Um, I heard a story about that once, uh, and it was just amazing. I was like, wow, that's, I didn't realize that was a thing, you know, a real thing. It just kind of made me think about it a little bit. Cause it's like, it's kind of weird how some of this stuff just radically alters how somebody perceives the world. Um, mm. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking about that is I'm thinking about the statement you made about your two children, how, you know, they both react differently to different things and people aren't machines and God is very powerful and do what, what he wills, I suppose. <clears throat> and what might be a, you know, a handicap considered a handicap for some is a tremendous gift for somebody else. And yeah, that's humanity is so bizarre. It just, <laughs> It is. It's it's a, a most amazing thing. And the more I think about it, the more I think of uh, especially you know, like being on this this side of, of gratitude, whereas you know, like I was pretty cynical. I had my um I had my moments of wonder and gratitude around humanity and especially around the arts and um being moved by uh by the arts and, and thinking of how incredibly amazing it is that people could create works of art like music or film or dance or and just you know and, and and be moved by those things but i was also pretty cynical um about the people that i met yeah and uh i had a lot of opinions that about things and i don't know where i got those opinions but they definitely shaped my relationship with people and i was often in the wrong so, you know, probably a lot of that was driven by fear and whatnot. But eventually, you know, <clears throat> coming to a different place with it, it's like, it's like a bottomless well, um, this, this wonderful race of people that God decided to, for whatever reason, make. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, what? Yeah, yeah. That's people? <laughs> how did you think of that oh my gosh yeah no you're right you're right um you know it's like oh, like that's one peterson thing that i i kind of latched on to it was it's just anytime you come into contact with anybody just just sit back and 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 be in awe mm -hmm. you know every single person has something to teach you and then when you come in with that kind of attitude and you realize of like, you think about how complicated you are and every single person is that complicated, if not more. <laughs> and then you just got to sit back and just, just, you know, just be in the presence of it. Cause it's, it's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's mind numbingly crazy. Right. Yeah. It really is. Um, <laughs> which I don't know. It's just, uh, yeah. And, and, I don't know. It, it, so, somehow in, in all of this, you know, um, whatever, I'm, I, you know, my, my, my spiritual stuff's all out of whack. I'm like, um, 
you know, the occult stuff, I'm like, oh, it's interesting or whatever, but it, it never, nothing ever came from it. Nothing, at least nothing good came from it. And so maybe I kind of picked up some of these other ideas of like, oh, I don't know, like um, new agey spiritual stuff. That sounds kind of interesting, you know? And so uh, I kind of gotten a little bit into that for a while. Um, and, and then really, I think it was kind of like the whole, I don't know, the whole 2012 thing just really kind of crapped all over it for me. You know, I was like, because I just, I remember sort of having this sort of like, I was just so interested in making myself better. Like that was sort of my main goal, right? If I make myself better, then my life will be better. And that makes everything else better, right? You know, that was kind of the, that was my telos, right? You know, it was, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but you start listening to all these other people like, oh, you know, frequencies and vibration, all this crap. And, and, but the problem is, is like, it just all, nothing ever comes from it, right? It's all just empty, hollow BS. And the whole 2012 thing was really kind of like the icing on the cake for me. It was just like, well, you know, it's just all, you're like, no, you're no different than anybody else. It's just a bunch of BS and. Um, you're trying to manipulate people and con people and all this crap. And I think that's kind of where my more darker phase really settled in, you know, even though you think I, I, I should be doing great, you know, I got beautiful children. I got a wife, I got a job, um, got a place to live. Um, but you know, um, drinking all the time and that, that crap messes with you quite a bit. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I guess I just kind of got, <laughs> and maybe I should watch, uh, Noah, Pr President Foxman's video. Um, I don't want to mistakenly use nihilism here. Um, but whatever I classically think of nihilism, I, I had that. <laughs> I kind of got into this place where I just like, didn't care. Like, I just really didn't care. Um, all, all these other ideas were just garbage and um, yeah, I don't know. It just, it wasn't, it wasn't a great, I don't know. Just, I had gotten to a, a, just a blah, a blah phase, you know? Um, let's see here. What changed, right? What changed? Mm -hmm. Um, so, well, whatever. We'll just fast forward. How about that? Sure. Well, how did I get here? Why am I talking to you? <laughs> yeah, why we can fast forward and then we can rewind again. In the how about that? Like, why am I talking to Chad the alcoholic? Why, oh, why is that? Um. So. Um. We, whatever. I don't know. Like. I think at one point in time I had uh, tried to go to church maybe once or twice. Um, somehow in all of this, my, and I, you know, gosh, I'm missing stuff. Um, my dad had become interested in religion, uh, Christianity. Um, he invited us to church a couple of times that, and uh, me and my wife went and um, I don't know, the pastor said the wrong thing, told me I'm going to hell. And so I just left and never came back. Um I guess in all of this, I probably should have mentioned that um, my dad had got remarried um, and uh, they, they had a kid. So my stepbrother and, and I'm 20 years older than him. Um, and so that was also a, a large part of the just I just couldn't. You know what I mean? Just like it was we just didn't. I was off party mode time and my dad's resetting the family doing family number two thing. And so, uh, none, none of it helped. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just, uh, um, but that was like, I had one little stint with, okay, whatever, I'll, I'll try this church thing out and, uh, just, you know, whatever dude said the wrong thing. Didn't like it. Gave that up for, for a while. Um, and then, you know, like I said, um, uh, well, you know, um, here's what happened. So, we're living in that trailer and I don't even know how it happened. I, I really, I can't remember, but 
we got black mold in the bathroom. Okay. And I started getting sick, you know, I mean, that's, that's how I found it and everything. And so it just was like, we're leaving, we're leaving right now, pack the family up. We're gone. We're leaving this thing. Um, and we had been talking about like, man, we really want a house and all this stuff. We got two kids and they're, they're, you know, uh, going to preschool and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, we gotta, we gotta get the hell out of the trailer park. You know what I mean? Like that was sort of, we gotta, we gotta go. It's black mold thing comes and we're just like, don't know what the hell we're going to do. You know, just don't know what we're going to do. And so we actually ended up going to her grandma's house. Um, now she had, she lived alone at this point because her husband passed away. Her son had passed away. So she's, she's by herself. And so we moved in there for a couple months and I don't know, somehow, some way we just magically able to figure out how to buy a damn house. And so here we are in the house that, just, I don't know. It's so weird um, now that uh, as I think back on it, you know, I'm like, how did all this happen? I don't really know. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's so, <laughs> it's, it's mind blowingly crazy to me when I, when I think about it. Yeah. <laughs> I love um, it. Well, you got, you're, you're like, oh, there's no way. There's no way we can get a house. We can't afford it. We can't do all this. And then it's like three months later, here we are moving into this house. And I'm like, how did that happen? I, <laughs> You'd think that you'd think that kind of stuff would have changed me, but it really didn't. Um, we still. You sound to me like a very strong-willed man. Oh yeah, <laughs> which is not a bad thing. Yeah, I can be. I can be. It's, it's yeah. good to know that about oneself because you can aim it in the right direction if you <clears throat> if you know that about yourself. It can also aim it in the wrong direction. Absolutely. It, you know, it's like. Why is it called waves of obsession? Because I get <laughs> obsessed about things in waves, right? <laughs> it just, um, and it, 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 it can, it can get out of control sometimes. Um, it was really a joke, honestly, for, for many years, it was a joke. Um, but then it just kind of wouldn't go away, you know, wouldn't go away. So, um, something happened though. We got, I don't know. Um, you know, me and my wife, we've always been, you know, we've been great together. You know, I love her to pieces, you know, just fall on the sword for, her, you know. Um, but, you know, she always had been a Christian. And I always have not been, always had been sort of like anti-Christian. Um, but, um, I don't know, we got this damn flyer in the mail. <laughs> okay, got a flyer in the mail from this church up the street. Not the flyer. The flyer, yeah, the damn flyer. And um, so overwhelmed, overwhelmed, right? <laughs> that was the new sermon series or whatever. And I'll tell you what, man, we were feeling over overwhelmed, okay? And whatever, you can say whatever you want about flyers. I don't really care. Um, something called, okay? And, and, and of all churches, I'm... I, it makes it just absolutely makes no sense to me. No, of all churches, right? This thing, this was a portable church that would get set up at a YMCA. <laughs> okay. Still to this day, I have I like we pull up to this. I'm just like, what in the hell am I doing here? <laughs> really? That's that was sort of like my first initial thought. Like, what am I doing here? Um, but you know, we, we walked in, we went in and you know, I'll be honest, like, I think that some of the nicest Christian people I've ever met in my life go to this church. Now, they don't all go there today, but just some really genuine, nice people, um, a lot like you, Chad. Like, they just really care about people they don't even know. Okay? They just do. They just, they were just good, honest people. They, they really care. They really care about people. And... Um, you know, I, I wasn't, I didn't want to just like turn around and leave. Okay. You know, now walking in there, I was like, there's no way in hell. I, you know, you're just wasting your time. You really shouldn't talk to me about this stuff. Cause I'm here for my children and, and for my, my wife, you know, cause 
Um, so we had both of the kids we had put into to preschool. Uh, there was a Lutheran school that was near the, the trailer park or whatever. And then over, over at this house here, there's a Methodist church. And so the two kids both went to um, some, some kind of, you know, um, really just preschool or whatnot. Not that that's a lot of exposure or anything, but uh, my oldest daughter in particular, she, she was really taken by it. Like really, really taken by it. Even to the point of like, you know, two, two, three, almost four years later, she's like asking mom, like, Hey, you know, what about God? What about God? You know, what's, what do we do? It really kind of confused me. Um, from my from my perspective i'm like what the hell's going on here you know um but uh yeah so this this was i don't know i guess this was like 2018 something like that um started going to this little church ymca and i don't know i met my first like He called himself this, so I can say, "Hey, uh, my my first annoying Christian friend." Okay, that's that's who he was. Um, <laughs> he was my first annoying Christian friend, uh, but in a good way, right? Um, but but he was the first one to actually kind of challenge me, and you know, hey, let's go out to lunch, whatever, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, he's a worship pastor, you know, so it's like it's kind of his job a little bit. Um, but he's just a really good guy, you know. He's a really good guy, and um, didn't. I mean, the only agenda he had was to try to get me to believe in Jesus. So, um, but, you know, he was one of the first ones that kind of said, like, have you actually read the Bible? <laughs> you know, <laughs> have you actually read it? And I kind of had to stop him. Kind of, I'm like, well, I opened it up a couple times and I, I read the beginning, you know, and I got to the the list of names and all that kind of garbage and put it down like, like most other people. <laughs> um, back in the day, I'd maybe destroyed a few of them. Um, so, so that's great. Um, but no, I didn't, didn't read it much. Uh, so yeah, he kind of was the first one to really challenge me. So, Hey, why don't you read it, read it for yourself. And that's sort of like my challenge. To everybody like, read it for yourself. <laughs> Just read it for yourself. You know, to get your bias off your off, you know, because I, I had that sort of idea, man, of just like, oh, it's just stupid book written by men to control other stupid men, you know, that's what it's for. <laughs> um, and so I read through the book of John, right? That's the one he's like, hey, read the book of John, okay, and um, read it, and I think I read it a couple times, then I read all the gospels. Um, it's like. You know, I guess I thought I knew the story, but I really didn't. You know, and, and uh, you start to pick up on some of the things of like, um, you know, some of the some of the really hard things Jesus asked you to do, right? You know, like, um, you know, pick up the cross, pick it up yourself, right? You know, that kind of stuff. And it's just like this is a horrible way to try and con people into controlling them. <laughs> it was it was it was it was sort of like my first real like step back of like man if i was going to invent a religion and invent a way to control people this is absolutely not what i would do in fact this is a really dumb idea to do it this way <laughs> um it's like oh <laughs> you give up everything and, and and you know it's just like so this is so albeit i just kind of got a little fascinated by it you know, I got fascinated by it. Wasn't a believer, but I definitely had, um, I got off the defensive, you know what I mean? Like, or offensive or whatever. I just, um, but, uh, I enjoyed going to church. I liked it. I liked it. It was fun. Good music. Um, the, the, uh, he's a, you know, got a great pastor. He's funny. He tells jokes in service. Um, his, his sermons are, uh, crafted uh, to be modern and relevant to problems that you have, like, I don't know, being overwhelmed in life and how to deal with that. And um, so, uh, but yeah, we kept going, kept going and kept going. I wanted to go. Like I enjoyed going, enjoyed being around these people. Um, and, and yeah, I don't know. I guess just 
slowly but surely it just uh whatever it started changing me you know um it just was it was a good thing right it was a good thing for me um and yeah i don't know uh, i'm uh, kind of met some a couple other people um that were a little more uh i don't know theologically uh, minded, you know, they, they wanted to talk, they, they, they could talk about some of the deeper levels of, of the scripture and things like this. And so that was getting, getting pretty interesting. And, uh, I think that's kind of like where I first really heard about Peterson, right? That was, like, it was in that same time frame. Um, cause the one guy was telling me to like, um, check out the, the biblical series, mm. right. You know, and, and, and I'm glad I did that because I, you know, that was sort of, that was one of the things that really helped me sort of look at, okay, here are different ways of interpreting scripture, right? How to, how to think about it differently or look at it from different angles and stuff. And so that was really my first, I don't know, gateway into, into Peterson. Um, and yeah, I, I just, um, well, um, wasn't too long after they had been doing a big whatever building campaign. Um, and so they were able to get out of the, get out of the YMCA and buy a, buy a building. And so we're doing, you know, got to do like demolition work and things like this. And um, me and my wife were like, but you know, whatever we're, 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 we're a part of it, you know? Um, and yeah, I know that's that's kind of like when that's when that's when it happened for me. Hmm. I remember it very clearly. Um, well, at least a couple couple series of things that happened to me that was uh, forever forever life changing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just uh, you know we we'd be in there doing demolition and stuff and. Um, whatever they, they, they want to go to the prayer and things like this. And I, I, I never would participate. Like I'd always sit there and just watch everybody. Um, because I, I, I did not want to, um, whatever, I'm probably going to get this wrong. Authentic, genuine, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it because like, it's real. You know what I mean? It's not, it's, I'm not going to just fake my way into this thing. Um, <laughs> But I remember like clear, like, I just remember it just standing there watching everybody and I could just see it. You know what I mean? I could see it. They all like, not only did they believe, like I could see that they believed. I, I don't know if I can explain that mm -hmm. any, like it was, just, it's hard to describe. Um, and that was sort of like my first sort of whatever i'll call it a mystical experience or something i don't know i just had this very odd like tingling cold sensation just like slowly like come up from my ankles all the way to my head okay you could call it like goosebumps or chills or something like that um i've had a lot of experience with things like that with hippie festivals and other other things this was not that this was very odd um very distinct never felt anything like it before um so that happened it sounds like being filled you know like when you pour like water into a cup or something and fill it from the bottom up it, 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 it was almost like if, imagine like taking a hula hoop that's electrically charged and just like going yeah it was it was so damn weird. It was it was it was startling. That's what I, I mean. It was startling is what it was. Mm -hmm. Now, this happened three other times. <laughs> Each time I had asked because I'm watching everybody and I'm like, I don't know what to do. You know, short of saying, Jesus, please give me a sign. That's essentially what I said. And that's what happened. Uh, three different times. Mm. Um, but it was the fourth time that I actually believed it. <laughs> 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 I 
It's so terrible. It's so terrible. Um, I mean, you knock and you, uh, knock, you get, you know, and, and, and the door is, is answered. And, and you can only see when you can see it, you know. I, I, I mean, because like, exactly, that's what, what he knew exactly. That's what of what you would need. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And I, you know, I, I didn't want it. Like, I didn't want any of this. I really didn't. Like, I was, I didn't want any of this to happen. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, people can say whatever they want. You know, they can say like, oh, you know, Christians, they just, they believe this because it makes them feel good. And ha that is the opposite of, of my experience. So, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I, I have a whole new outlook on everything in the world, but. That's my experience. <laughs> That's why I tell people, I say, if, uh, listen, if you're considering, um, you know, being a Christian uh, or not, um, just turn around and run really quick. Because <laughs> you, yeah. you, yeah. you don't know what that two by four looks like. Mm -mm, mm -mm. <clears throat> no, no, you don't. You don't. Um, and, 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 you know, I, I, I want to say something like, and once you see it, or once you know it, you'll never go back. Um, obviously, uh, many many of our friends who that's exactly what's happened to them would, would tell me I'm a liar. Um, but but I you know on the other side of the fence over here, I'm I'm struggling, going like I don't I don't know how that's possible. Really, I don't I don't at where I'm at um, on don't. my journey. I just I I I, I don't I, I don't know. Yeah, let's not let's not vivisect that rainbow because I tell you, I've had that one day that fear hit me. I was like, because I had the same kind of experience. I wasn't looking for it, and it was like, here you go, now it's yours. And I'm like, uh, uh. and then and now, and what the the the, the scary realization was uh, that I had better I had better. Um, I had better try to grow into what it was that he gave me um, because if he had the power to give it to me, I think he has the power to take it away. And that is terrifying. To me. Hey, I know, I, I know what you mean. Um, so, you know, this was, so I became a believer on November 2nd, 2019, 9 30 PM. Like I know it on the dot because that's when the fourth, experience happened that I just, I'm, I believe, I believe I don't, I'm, I'm a believer. Okay. I am. And, um, it has just been like, I don't know, for me, it's just been a damn roller coaster ever since then. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in, I'm, I'm well past my honeymoon phase. Okay. Um, and so, you know, sometimes I go back like, damn, you know, I wish he'd give me that same sort of experience. And I'm like, no, it's, you know, that's what took you to get you here. And now that you're here, you gotta, you gotta believe you gotta have faith and you gotta do the works and you gotta do all the, the hard stuff that it takes to be a disciple of Christ, which is just extremely hard, extremely hard. Um, and, and, you know, you were asking about, you know, uh, how, how do you, how do you teach your kids? You know, and it's like, how do you teach your kids that? <laughs> okay. Um, Cause I tell them all the time, even still to this day, I'm like, I, I want you to believe because you believe I do not want you to believe because I believe like you have to know why you believe and it, it needs to be for you. It's, it, it just like, cause I, I was really worried, you know, I, I, it is the last thing in the world I wanted to happen is that, um, to be another one of these, oh, I grew up in a terrible fundamental religious household and now I'm going to rebel against God. And so I've been very adamant about pushing both of my girls to, to, to really explore, like, you're a Christian because you believe in Christ and you do know what that means, right? <laughs> so, um, but uh, I'll be, you know, life has been... Um, challenging but extremely different like i i just just it has been that's my evidence like <laughs> um yeah 
yeah, I don't know. Um, so that's kind of how, you know, I was listening to the, the, the biblical stuff and it kind of really helped me look at the scripture in a different way, you know, uh, and I guess the other one, um, the other, the other, uh, scripture that really sort of influenced me a lot was, um, Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, mm. Ecclesiastes in particular, that one really hit me. Um, that was, that was almost one of the ones that kind of was like a catalyst to sort of like made me seriously look at the Bible in a completely different way. Um, I don't know if you've really read through it much, but it's, it's a short read. Um, actually listened to it earlier today before we had this, this conversation. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I think the thing about it was, is it just felt very out of place, at least from my like general perspective of what the Bible is and, and what my, what my thoughts about it were like, what, what are my thoughts about Christianity and Hebrew scripture? Um, it, it just, I don't know. You read that book and you're just like, what, 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 what is going on here? You know? And, I think for me, I think what it was is I was just like the first time I read through that, I was just like, damn, I could have wrote that. Like, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it echoed so many thoughts of how I thought about life in general. Mm. Just so like everything is vanity. Like what's the purpose sort of, we're just toiling and toiling and busy, just busy buddies. And um, just like so many elements of it, just like, damn, like, ugh. It, it, it really resonated with me a lot. <laughs> Interesting because it was written by a king, wasn't it? Or, well, I mean, whatever. At most people, most people would say it's written by Solomon, right? Well, well, somebody who at least had a a, a large dose of affluence. Oh yeah, well, and well, Solomon. You know, if, if it was Solomon, Solomon, whatever he asked God, he's like, you know, God give you anything you want. What does he ask for? Wisdom. Right? He's a young king. He's not wise, and so he asks for wisdom. And, and God gives it to him. Um, but with that wisdom, he becomes like the wealthiest man in the entire world and yeah. has every, every delight and pleasure known to man. Right. Right. And, and what is he like, what is the final conclusion of all of that? Well, everything's vanity. It's all just, you're here one day, you're gone. The next life is like a shadow. You know, it's like chasing the wind. Uh. It's, it's just like, whoosh, you know, and then you get to the very, very end of the book, and who knows whether it's written by him or not. It's, it, it really doesn't matter. And it's not doesn't the point. Matter. It's not right. the point. But at the very, very end, there's this little phrase. It's just kind of like, um, you know, he, he was, you know, you talk about he was a wise man. He was, he was rearranging proverbs to kind of teach the people how to do right and know goodness from, you know, good from bad. And um, it's just this little phrase. It's just like, Something, something along the lines of, um, gosh, I'm not, I can't even think of it. Um, I don't know. It's something like the words of the wise, are like a goad, like a goad. A goad mm -hmm. is like a prod that that they, you know, poke the sheep and go, you know. Um, but then it also comes back and says, like, uh, and his words are like uh, nails firmly fixed, and they're all given by one shepherd. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of was like, whew. It's like, mm. to me, this was like Jesus mm. in in just in one of my favorite scriptures, right? You know? And whatever people can say. People can have whatever uh, interpretation they want. Uh, that's fine by, you know. But for me, that's that was, it was like, whew, you know, there it is. Here he is. Do you, uh, he's everywhere. <laughs> do you remember when, um, when Peterson... This this must have been right, like probably around the time before he went away for a while. Mm -hmm. There was there was um, one of the talks he gave. He talked about uh, how we live in a world where, like guys like you and I, and probably like everybody who's watching this, um, has has. Uh, the living, the standards of living that we have right now is, is like, it far exceeds that of like the Rockefellers, of yeah. like the Rockefeller. When you think about that, that's insane, mm -hmm. right? And so thinking about 
uh, why Ecclesiastes would be so impactful. It's like, well, because we're living in a nation of kings. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. A, a, a nation of kings of kings that won't admit it. You know, ungrateful. Oh, oh no, I, I think about it frequently. Mm. Not maybe in a good way, you know. Um, but no, that that does that that crosses my mind rather frequently. Because mm -hmm. you're right, you know. It's like, uh, and we when we think we're poor for crying out loud, you know. <laughs> I sit there and complain about how I'm poor, you know, and I'm like, what the hell am I talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what am yeah. I talking about, man? Even um, homeless, living on the uh, on the floor of the office building that I was living on. I, we had a DVD player, a microwave, uh, a mini fridge. And though I didn't have a shower, I did <laughs> have running water in the bathroom where I could do a horse bath. Yeah, yeah. It's still pretty affluent. Yeah, and, that's better than most kings back in the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. With soap readily available. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything. Yeah. Well, even just, I mean, one of the things I think a lot about is just uh, light. Like, damn, you know, I mean... Um, just, just the light, it, it's, um, such a different world we live in and it's just such a different world. It's hard to even, um, I have yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six light bulbs right now that are illuminating this, this room. That's insane, dude. Yeah, one of them's on your forehead. Right. I, yeah. Not to <laughs> mention this, uh, this this black mirror that has like the largest library known to man yeah, in the yeah. of my hand where I'm talking to a dude in Kansas. What? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy dude. Yeah. 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 And, I, yeah. and then we got the audacity to complain about stuff, you know? Oh yeah. 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 Nobody understands. Nobody <laughs> understands me. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, if I think about like, what does it mean to be a Christian? It's like, humble yourself, mm. like majorly. Um, there's nothing easy about it. It's probably the most difficult thing you'll ever do in your life if you're doing it halfway decent. Um, am I doing it decent? No, I don't think so. I'm doing a horrible job. Um, but it, it doesn't, uh, does, doesn't discount what I believe. Um, and I'm just grateful I get to meet, you know, people like you and uh it's just yeah i don't know um yeah <laughs> tell me about um about what do you think it was that peterson did i mean how why why at that time and to whom how did what what happened there what's your estimation of what happened there <clears throat> I mean, I don't know. I, I guess, I guess, if I'm sort of thinking about it, it culturally, it's probably just like it's the the scale finally tipped. I think, you know. I mean, we kind of we finally sort of hit that no longer being a Christian culture, mm. right? You know, that was sort of the the tipping point. We 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 were, you know coming out of the nineties, going into the two thousands, two thousands is to start a PC culture, right? Oh, don't hurt me. Whatever. Don't say this. Don't say that. And, um, the height of self-centeredness, maybe height of self-centeredness, um, the church not, um, being respected anymore or being, um, well, I don't know, just the whole inversion of, of, of priorities and, and, what is good and um i don't know it just it just sort of you know grim talks a lot about a lot you know it's like you got set you got the set in everybody's house telling you what to do telling you what to think telling you what morals are and aren't and so all this stuff starts i think it just sort of you know what i mean it just sort of it's just cracked um and then you look at the political scene and then it's just like everybody knows what's going on if you talk to any rational person who's not just a crazy uh, politic person, you know, they're, they're like, yeah, everything's totally messed up and we all know it. We're all complacent. We all know it. We all know it's happening. Yeah. It's our fault. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it is really, 
but yeah, I mean, everybody's just kind of like, I'm done, whatever. I'm going to just sit in my little palace and I don't, you know, I can't worry about all that stuff. And to some degree, I, you know, that's, that's how I felt. That's how I feel. I, I kind of think about like, how big is the world, right? How big is my world? Probably about 50 miles that way and 50 miles that way and 50 miles that way, you know? Cause that's about even to think that far is maybe a little much, you know? Um, but yeah. Yeah. I, and, and then I think, I think it also has something to do with, with um, YouTube. Right. I think, I think something to do with YouTube and um, I'm trying to think of like, when, when did TikTok really start getting, getting steam? It might've been, fairly close to when Peterson started going as sort of like, you know, you had, you had the, the TikTok micro content thing. And I think, I think it really kind of unsettled a lot of people. Like, I think people were like, Whoa, this is, this is not like YouTube's bad enough. And then you get this and it's just Facebook and that. And I don't know. I think, I think uh, access to these, whatever lectures and long content and all this sort of stuff. I think that that's sort of at least what, what, what allowed him to come into existence. It's a trip to me because I, I like, I never encountered um, TikTok so I, still to this day. Thank God. <laughs> uh, but what, one of yeah, one of the striking things for me initially was, um, kind of being shocked that, uh, wow, I'm actually interested in, in this. And I'm, like, I'm hoping that the next lecture is longer. <laughs> and like, and then I, like when you, it's weird because when you lay up the, the runtime of like uh, any of, any, especially those, um, the, uh, the Genesis series lecture, uh, runtime of any one of those videos up against any um motion picture mm -hmm. it, it eclipses it oh yeah yeah and, and it's like wow and this is very um potent and so yeah i was really shocked at being able to be that interested in um in that sort of thing and then and then yeah oh i can get earbuds oh you know. <laughs> and then oh yeah yeah that's true that's true you know i mean it all started kind of happening in the same era, you know, but yeah. I think, yeah, it, I think a huge part of it is just whatever the, the, the regular TV platforms were dying, mm -hmm. right? Everybody was like, nobody cares. At least I don't know me personally. Like I, I, I stopped, I, I haven't had regular TV for I don't even know. 12 right. years? <laughs> yeah. 15? I don't know. I don't know how long ago it was. I, I you know, and I, I pretty much switched over to things like uh, YouTube and things like this. So I think, I think that's also another, just everybody's just, I, I don't know. Everything just got to be too much, right? It's just, you know, media's, it's all garbage and low content stuff. And even YouTube started getting really, um, Whatever, it's just like oh, you know, got these fancy backgrounds and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, yeah, I really like, and then I started actually listening to a lot of, <laughs> excuse me, a lot of books, which mm. like a shock to me because you couldn't, I you couldn't get me a book to read a book to save my life, uh, like you know, seven years ago. Other than maybe the the book of Alcoholics Anonymous, but other than that, a right. book, oh my! <laughs> you know it's funny because like I, I guess I've listened to like I've always liked a lot of the, uh, like the golden golden era sci-fi, like that's kind of been my jam for for a long time. Um, even since becoming a a Christian now, I I, I really haven't read a ton of actual Christian books. Mm -hmm. Like I've only read a couple. Like, and I know having enough exposure to PVK and others, you know, it's like, I probably should read some of this stuff, maybe some C.S. Lewis here or there or whatever. And, um, 
So yeah, sometimes I sit back and I listen to some of the conversation. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I really don't. <laughs> but I'm listening and it's, it's interesting. So yeah. Well, I so I don't actually read. Um, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I listen. I listen. I love to listen to books. I just actually just um I just want to put a plug for a book that I I tripped over a Tom Hanks book. Oh yeah, you were talking about this. And I was like, all right. Yeah, I got it for like a two for one deal. You got Audible? Yeah, on Audible, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, that'll be fine. And I thought the title was kind of dumb. It's called uh, An- The Making of Another uh, Motion Picture Masterpiece. And I was like, that's a really long, stupid title. <laughs> but it's a novel. All right, half off. I yeah. get two books for one credit. Fine. Yeah, and, I you know. and I was like, I was so happy that i got that book man because it made me laugh it made me cry i had like it just was a great book you know that's good that's good man you know i i actually just got a book uh not too long ago um so somebody somebody from the corner hasn't really been participating or while for a while he he mentioned it to me and i you know i was like uh, a little hesitant about getting it because it's a it's a fantasy book and i'm i'm not really a big fantasy fan but this has been an amazing book man Mm. like a really really amazing book in fact just today when i was listening to it i'm like i'm pretty sure the book of ecclesiastes is a huge influence to it Mm. and i almost guarantee it um but it's this book by uh brendan brendan sanderson okay it's called the way of kings okay stormlight archive it's a long ass it's a long book it's like 36 hours. The Way of Kings. I yeah, wonder... The Way of Kings. It's hmm. like a, a three a trilogy, maybe. Okay. It's it's amazing. Like I'm I'm not a huge fantasy fan, but this is by far the best I've ever ever listened to. So it's just great. <laughs> it's just really good. Really, really, really good. What a treat, eh? His stories are such a treat. Man. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's why I like doing this too, because I like as much as I love, like I like to have a variety of the stories. I like some of the thinky talky stuff; it's fun and all. But I love when I get to hear people tell their stories, and then I like to break it up with some good fiction. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and honestly, like I don't know. Lately, I've been kind of a little disconnected with everything. Um, whatever. Junes are always crazy because that's both of my daughters have their birthdays in June, and. We had a, a week long vacation, and so it's just been really hectic in life. You know, life's been really hectic. And I had been reading this book. Um, damn, what's it called? Now I'm going to forget it. Saving the Appearances. Oh, yeah. I finally finished it. I, I really, I, like, I read it, paper, paperback version, read it very slowly. You know, Barfield? Barfield, Owen Barfield. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what to say, man. I'm like, I don't know. The book kind of almost put me in a strange mood. Yeah, it it kind of put me in a strange mood. What does that mean? It means that it just, the book has a, I don't know, a, 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 it certainly impacted the way that I perceive reality. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and it just kind of like, it's heavy. You know what I mean? It's a heavy, it's a heavy book, a heavy concept. And yeah. like, if, if half of what he says is true, it's just like, Oh my gosh, you, so many things that you take for granted, you might as well just like undo. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I, I recently was, um, so I, uh, Vander Clay a couple months ago was talking about that. The book, the They Flew book by Carlos Ayer. Oh, yeah, that, uh, Mr. Grogan was talking about that. Yeah, and, um, but I actually was listening to I actually should go back to it because I haven't finished it yet. But man, I was hook, line, and sinker on that thing. And then I was thinking, what does that mean? What does <laughs> that mean if, that's, if this is, um, in fact, what happened? What does that even mean? <laughs> like... And I was thinking about um, recently the um, at church they had this uh, uh, for the, the the calendar the lectionary calendar that they have they they'll have like readings and one of the readings okay. was 
was where um, Jesus uh, goes to his hometown and like the people are like, isn't that like the carpenter? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he says something. I don't remember exactly what he says, but it was something to the effect of, I can't do anything here because you guys, you guys, like, my my power here is limited almost. Yeah. And I was thinking about that and thinking about the, where we've gone, how much of today, how do I put this where it makes sense? <clears throat> How much of the world that we live in today, especially the West that we live in, is 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 very much like Nazareth, and we're all Nazarenes walking around, and that carpenter's kid Jesus. We don't really. It's isn't that the carpenter's kid, and and, th- and thus, you know, things like not being um, connected to a world where. People levitate and fly. Uh, I mean, you're right back to Barfield and saving the appearances. Okay, I need to read that, but I—that's what I mean. It's like when he talks about like original participation and the origins of language and all the infrastructure built around. Like, why is almost every piece of our language metaphorical? Right. (laughs) It's that's why. It's because people they didn't just think differently like they experienced reality differently mm-hmm. major like just completely and utterly differently yeah um, <laughs> and, I, and I, that's where i'm at man i'm like i'm trying to like rip it all away and start start over <laughs> yeah i mean uh, so our our perception our um our access to to faith and perhaps this is why when people hit a bottom <clears throat> like like you reached and like many people they reach these different bottoms and they all kind of are all very personally specific um but they make they make us willing and um which kind of perhaps um uh widens widens the door to to uh, uh access to faith and that's why I've never, I could never understand like some of the, some of the, like I'm, I'm almost envious of those who, who, who can, who, who talk about faith as if it's just like this, like this thing you, it seems as though they say it's, it's as if they're saying that you can shut it off and on and, and like, mm. boy, wouldn't that be nice? You know, mm. um, but I, it's not my experience and, and, and it's deep. The reason why I think this 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 um, journey that each of us are on is so beautiful is it's it's the most it's the most incredible thing that to to have the the, the to live in the world we once lived in with the with the kind of sight that we had with all of the experience that we've had out of all of that, which is kind of like pointing to your Ecclesi- Ecclesiastes, and then to have that kind of yeah, yeah. To, to be able to like wake up in, into a whole new uh, I, I, I mean that's it man you know that's and that's that's where I'm at right now I'm still wrestling with it constantly you know it's just like okay now I'm a believer what does that mean right you know it's like now now things like uh the spiritual reality of nature is not just, an idea it's it's a thing i got to grapple with mm. um maybe not fully understand because i don't i don't think any of us really can understand it but i can no longer just be like oh that don't exist <laughs> give me evidence of that give, give. i'm like now i'm just trying to figure out how to how to like integrate it appropriately mm. right um it's challenging right yeah it's really really challenging with humility, that that be yeah. that be my best uh, suggestion. I think as much as you can muster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. Yeah, yeah. Good luck. Good luck. But if you, you figure know, it out, let me know. <laughs> you mentioned something a couple months ago. You talked about um, discipling with others and, mm. and helping somebody else walk through um, uh, a journey of discipleship and 
and I was wondering, you know, what has your experience been like that since then? And, you know, like, and, and does that for you, does that connect to what we're talking about here <clears throat> and how so, if so? Um, well, you know, I, you know, I, 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 I've not been through AA or anything. I certainly right. know a lot more about it because of you. I also know a lot more about it because of the person I discipled. Mm. Um, uh, he was also, you know, he, he has been through the 12 steps and he has, you know, helped others and still does. Right. He's, he's really, really gracious in that department. Um, and I, it was always really, um, really nice that he could, you know, um, we, we go through and, and whatever, this is more of a structured sort of thing. It was something that our church, um, uh, whatever we, you know, we use a particular book and it's whatever, you know, it's, it's, it's got a 18 week kind of, you know, um, directions. That's what it's called. Um, but you know, I, I, I walked through that. And so I went through it myself with somebody else. That's how I actually got, you know, that's how I kind of got introduced to Peterson in the first place was because of that guy. Mm -hmm. Then I, after being discipled, disciple somebody else so i took i took somebody through it um and it was i don't know it was um i i you know i consider that person a really good friend of mine somebody i you know and i don't i don't say that lightly i don't have a lot of friends i don't have a lot of people i'd actually say like you are my friend and i will i will help you you know what i mean um but yeah it was very transformative for me and i you know I, not going to speak for him, but, you know, I think uh, it was a mutual, you know what I mean? We both grew a lot out of it. Um, and yeah, if you get any opportunity to do it, I mean, I don't know you, whether you know it or not, you're doing it a lot. Mm. I think you are like, I'm, you know, um, I know, I know you, um, you know, whatever from, from your uh, 12 step frames and whatnot, but uh, I think you do a really good job about, encouraging others and, and, and discipling others, especially considering, uh, you know, you're, you're, I think you're, you're newer than I am. Right. I mean, you're only a couple of years into this. So, uh, it's, a, it's, uh, it's encouraging, really very encouraging. Well, I appreciate that kind, kind words. Well, the thing I would say to that is to me, that's where the good dope is. <laughs> That's the best. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, walking alongside somebody, especially when you watch transformations happen. It's like, why wouldn't I do this? I don't have to be good at it. <laughs> you know, like, especially if you have a book with directions. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, the journey isn't you teaching. It's, it's the walking together shoulder to shoulder. It's the discoveries we make. It's the... Is it, uh, I was in the detox the other day and the guy said at the end of the thing, I was talking with him and, and he says, you know, all this sounds really good, but it just sounds like a big commitment. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. shit. Of course it's a big commitment. It's the best thing that ever happened in your life. It's a big yeah. commitment. Who gives a shit? Like, seriously, all great things. Uh, it's a very small price to pay pay for the best answer you'll find well it's it's you know that's like uh accepting christ yes easiest thing you'll do and it'll cost you everything <laughs> it's free but it'll it's the most expensive thing you'll ever do in your life yeah <laughs> yes. yes thank god for that man yeah Please. well and, and you know another thing um semi related to the directions thing is um I so I listened to your conversation with Phil mm. a couple months or so ago. I don't know. Phil's a great guy. Um, but he mentioned um I'm gonna mess it up. Project Alpha. Yes. Alpha. Yep. So we're we're about to do that. And so I got I'm I'm gonna be participating in that here soon. So I'm I'm anxious about it, but excited all at the same time. So I don't I don't know what that's going to be like, but should Good. be interesting. Yeah, because if, if you knew, would you do it? That, yeah. You know, I mean, 
that's that's again that's kind of like one of the i think if if i can give any um try and be helpful in any way all, all of the spiritual life everything that i've experienced it really rests on um uh discovering and discarding with the help with the help of seeking god on um, the the things that I, th I know for sure that just that just ain't true <laughs> My, you know, ex what are the prejudices? What are the things that are blocking me from being able to to uh, to encounter this tremendous uh, adventure, the greatest adventure that I never wanted to take? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. Looking looking back on it all, I'm I'm like, you know. Eh. Whatever I, I look at myself ten years ago and I'd be like, "This, there's no way, there's no way that, that you know you'd ever be doing that." And then now here I am, and I'm just like, I still don't understand it exactly, but um, it has just been the, I don't know, it's 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 an ineffable, indescribable thing. Really, it's it's hard to put words to. Um, yeah, it's tough. <laughs> it's a tough one, man. As sure. So we can go for a little longer if you like. I was wondering then, um, so how did you find uh, the, let's say, the little corner? The little corner? Uh, so um, I don't know. I, I guess YouTube. YouTube uh, is pretty good about finding, finding the others for sure. Um, yeah, I think I just stumbled across one of PVK's little commentaries. And... Um, you know, I kind of, uh, I don't know. I got bored with Peterson, honestly. I think that's what it was. And I just, you start listening to, um, you know, PVK and it's just like, hey, okay. You know, here's a, um, I don't know. You know, I don't want to call him a, an average Joe, but you know, he's kind of an average Joe, you know, and he's just speaking his mind and, uh, having, he, he has a similar sort of thinking process that I'd say, uh, I do, or I would imagine a lot of people in the corner actually do. And that's what kind of draws them to him and his style and the way he does and processes things is what people are like, yeah, yeah, I, I get it. Cause that's somewhat how I'm, I kind of look at it too. And so um, I went through a lot of it, a whole, whole lot of it. Um, I've damn near watched his whole, like, I don't want to say all of it, but a huge, huge amount of it. Um, but then I'd kind of fall out of it though, uh, for, for a while. Um, and then I, I guess, I don't know, last year, maybe, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like when you, so, so you, you, Chris Pacow and Grimm were starting to kind of do some little, you know, conversations and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And, and that was sort of like, I kind of started, to. I don't know, be more interested in that. Um, and then I go back to PVK and kind of switch it up a little bit. So that's kind of how I kind of, whatever, got got into a lot of this. Um, and then it was really you, honestly. I mean, you kept pushing people. <laughs> uh, you started doing the calls to do this, the randos. Yeah. And I was like, ah, ah, ah. I, I literally had my finger over the damn button. Like, Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to send him a message. And then, and then Neil, Neil popped up there and I was like, Phew, you know, <laughs> but then I, I'm not sure what happened. I, um, I got bored again and then, uh, had a little obsession, a little wave, wave hit me. And I started, uh, I don't know, but I can't remember what the hell it was. It was something, Something to do with like, there's some weird ass conspiracy about buildings, uh, mud floods, and all this kind of stuff. And <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it's it's a. I don't even want to get into it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but I, uh, I I got interested in the the 1904 World's Fair. Oh. Okay, and and because of course you know that's part of the whole grand conspiracy and all this crap. And so, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm really close to St. Louis here. And so I'm like, oh, yeah, I really don't know much about it. And so that was my, I got super obsessed about it, man. I, I just, oh gosh, I put a lot of, 
uh, investigative work into, I don't know what I, I made. I that was, that was my first video I ever made. And I don't even know why I, I really don't know why I did it, but I did. I just had to get it out of my system really. Um, and then you started saying, you know, Hey, come out and play, you know? And so that was really, I think what triggered me to say, Hey, okay, this is what I'm more interested in. And so it's kind of what triggered me to make my whatever first TLC video. So there you go. It's your fault. It was a lot of fun. It was a great <laughs> And I hope in, in the, the calls that I made, I, I, I hope I made it clear that play is right up there at the high, like one of the highest principles of the game. It is play. Yeah. Serious play, but it's a play. Serious play. Yeah. You know, because like, like I, I've had those creative endeavors too, where like you're saying, I don't know why I made this. I don't know why I carved those damn blocks of wood back there. <laughs> I'm not a wood carver. Yeah. But, but they wanted to be carved, and damn it, they, they're like, we're getting carved. And so we carved them. And, and I don't know if I'll ever do that again. But, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah. I did it for about a month and a half, and that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's me in a nutshell, you know, because I'm like, right now, um, I've been, I don't know, I've been thinking about writing again. You know, I've been looking through some of my whatever uh stories are in a folder that no one ever reads you know and so i've been kind of looking at those again and then that leads to whatever the stupid rpg crap is again because i'm like oh i'm thinking about stories and metaphors and myths and folklore and all this other stuff and so then i start thinking about this again and that's kind of how it works with me just go on these waves and so yeah, I don't know. That's that's where I'm at right now, and here I'm talking to you. And um, that's cool, man. You yeah, know, it is cool. You know, I, like when what I like about what you're saying is, um, and I've said this before, but like I ask people, "Do you ever write?" And they're like, "No, nah, I'm not good at it." And it's like, I didn't ask you if you're good at it. Like, do, do you have experience writing, and do you know that feeling you get when you're doing it? Like. <laughs> That's, like we don't have to be great at this stuff to to use the gifts that God has given us. Yeah. You know, like this is a this is um, there's these gifts are like no other. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so yeah, if, if people decide to do this or like you decide to to write or share your stories, uh, I mean, it's 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 the for me, I like the I like the aspect of show and tell. It's very fun, and. And that's, uh, and sometimes I could tell if it's good or not. And <laughs> sometimes the things I think are like the coolest, like nobody watches. <laughs> yeah, you know, but it's okay. I, it's okay, right? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's fun. It's fun play. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I think that's actually. So whatever I, I you know I'm like, I haven't uh, like what do I want to make a video of? Hmm, I don't know. I nothing really. But that's I think that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm probably just gonna. I'm going to dust off these short stories and probably just narrate them and put them out as a little, whatever, an audio, audio book or whatever, short stories. But, you know, what else are they going to do? They're just going to sit in the damn folder and collect dust or digital dust or whatever they do. <laughs> <laughs> Mountains of the stuff, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cool, man. Yeah. Well, Chris, is there anything else you'd like to share? I don't know, man. I I, I think I was, uh, I think I put a little too much, like always, you know, you, you come into something like this, you're like, yeah, man, talk my story and all this. And I, I think I got out when I needed to. It was great, man. It, it's good talking to you, you know. I think this is my actual first time talking just with you. So it's been a pleasure. You know, really enjoy it. Well, thank you, and and um, yeah, uh, you know, you'll get you'll get like you often do get uh, invites for stuff because I, I think you have a very cool mind and you have a different per um, a different type of uh, temperament and and a solid perspective. And I like to mix it up 
in that way. You know, if you notice like all the different, especially like, I think the one thing that I'll probably um, lean mostly into at the end of the day will probably be the not estuary shows because those are really fun to. Um, well, I think you can even get, cause like, I don't know, but you know, whenever I get in a group setting sometimes like I, whatever, it's a bad habit. You know, I, I very much take on the speak when spoken to kind mm -hmm. of attitude. Like that's my default nature. Speak when spoken to when I speak, I don't have any problem doing it. I, you know, talk your damn ear off sometimes, but, but generally when I get myself in that scenario, I'm no speak when spoken to. And so at least with the estuary thing, you know, you kind of, I don't want to say force people, but um, it's a little more, ah, it's a little more structured, man. you know, shut the hell up, Chris, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But no, I, I like those. I think those are good. So, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, that's my dogs. They're barking. And, yeah, uh, my dogs. I'm surprised they're not going crazy either. So, so I'm, I'm, I don't know what they're barking at, but they're making me think of food. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You should probably do that. <laughs> it's okay. I need to go out to my garden anyways before it gets dark. It's All been right. raining here like crazy, so I, I yeah. think half my tomatoes are probably gone. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, Mr. McDonald, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. All uh, right, man. Stick around one minute, and uh, well, everybody will say, say bye, Chris. Hey. Enjoy the brain. <laughs> this is the story of the search for mind control. Mission mind control. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> well, we don't do that. Um, whoa. Wow. 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 Oh my I don't know about the meaning crisis Left, right, black, white, or other vices But Jesus Christ is right Or oh, if we're all saved From my perspective Our propositions Participate procedurally Running in circles Remember in body We're in the age of decay Symbolically speaking, the reapers are reaping. Them damn egregores are whispering sweetly. We're all NPCs in the belly of the beast. Red pill, blue pill, bread pill, Mars Hill, or DMT, or whatever you feel. Got one and number two, it's all the same damn thing. So clean your room, repent on Zoom, ontology for dummies, a bird's eye view. Cause if you really knew, could you really even say? Totally depraved, all totally saved A total disposition from the bed we all made Or is it the elect? Or are we just insane? From John Verbeke to Jonathan Pajot And Jordan Peterson to the Chris Pacu Show Paul Vander Clays and Griswold Grimm and all the dice he shakes. The sestuary ditty is a little bit cringy and quite the U-shaped or the hero's journey. All the NPCs in the flood dread and water to watch you save the day with a bunch of chitter chatter. From the ortho bros to the Catholic Joes, or atheistic Joes, to Protestant folks, the Joe Schmoes, 
and Jewish Jacobs and everything in between. So love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and with all your mind and your fingers and toes all your neighbors too as if they were your own so love the lord your god with all your heart and soul and with all your mind and your fingers and toes all your neighbors too as if they were your own